To grade the exams in MyOpenMath, open up the course, click on the gradebook, scroll until you see the exam column. You may have to scroll down to see the horizontal scroll bar. Once you find the exam, you can click on Isolate to make it easier to work with the grades. If you click on a score, that will pull up all of the student's work on that exam. A useful thing to do here is to hide the full credit questions. That way you only see the questions that need to be graded. So if you go to a student's answer, there's a green check mark to indicate the answer is correct. Now the important thing to recognize here is that if a student has made a computational error, they'll have been penalized for it because they didn't get the correct answer. And what that means is you don't have to follow a student's computations. Instead, you can just check to see if the student has taken certain steps. And you can pull up the student's work either by clicking on View Work. So this student scanned an image of their work and uploaded it. To make grading easier, many of the questions have a grading rubric. The rubric, if it exists, is a guide, not a straitjacket. If this exists, you can find it in the clipboard next to the last score box. Clicking on the clipboard pulls up a rubric. And if you choose to use the rubric, you can look at the student's work and then check off whether they've done certain things in the problem. So the first thing on the rubric is setting up an equation. So we might take a look at the student's work. So we can see they set up an equation. And the thing to remember is that if they set up the wrong equation, maybe they miscopied a number, that's already been accounted for. So you don't need to check that this is the correct equation, because if it isn't, the student has already been penalized. So we can check that off. The next thing is to see if they solved the equation. And we see that they did. And again, it's not necessary to check if this solution is correct, because if they solve the equation incorrectly, they will have already lost points on the problem. And then this question also has them find the y-intercepts, so we can see if they did that. Looks like it. And again, if they made a computational error or used the wrong formula, they would have already been penalized for it. Once you're done, you can clear existing and record, or just record if it's the first time, and save changes. Sometimes you'll have to make a judgment of whether a student's work is sufficient. And note that even though this question has a rubric, you can assign any points you want to. The rubric is a guide, not a straitjacket. Note that the number to the right is the maximum number of points possible for showing work. If you want to, you can also write notes to the students in the feedback box. So we read the students' work, and we write an explanation that will be helpful for them next time. We'll add feedback, and write an encouraging note or an explanation. Some problems require the student to enter more than one answer. If they don't enter all of the answers that are required, but they do enter answers correctly, they'll get a yellow check mark. And if you click on the answer key, you can see what the full answer should be. So remember, the rubric is a guide, not a straitjacket. So here the student described what they did. But if we pull up the rubric, we see that they expanded and got the equation into general form. So we'll give them credit for that. But how about the rest of the points? The rubric doesn't give us many options. But remember, the rubric is a guide, not a straitjacket, so we can assign other points if we want to. And always save changes.